up YouTube? Today we're going to be going over the top 5 meta league starters. A lot of the dust has settled. We're finally able to see who was right. Who was able to influence the league starters the most? And was Explosive Arrow actually 25% played? Now, did Poison dominate the meta like so many people predicted? A lot of people thought that Poison Spectral Helix was going to own or Poison Lightning Strike was going to own. A lot of people also thought that Summon Skeletons would be super, super popular. So this video is pretty fun. It really does showcase like what were the most popular league starters. And it does go to show whether GGG's nerfs or buffs changed anything at all. So let's get straight into it and see who were actually the most meta league starters. Right off in my last video with the top five league starters in Scourge, not Scourge League, in Arch Nemesis League, my predictions were that the top five were going to be Poisonous Concoction, Explosive Arrow, Summon Skeletons, Lightning Strike, and Spectral Helix Poison. The honorable mention I gave was Seismic Trap because I wasn't really sure how all the nerfs were going to play out. And turns out, if you included that, I got the top six actually all correct. I got Explosive Arrow. Summon Skeletons, Poisonous Concoction, Vol Summon Skeletons, Spectral Helix, Seismic Trap, and Lightning Strike. So basically all of the top 6 were right. And it just pretty much came down to whether Seismic Trap was actually in the top 5 or not. And I did believe that Seismic Trap would probably not be played as much as last time. And although that was correct, because I think Seismic Trap was actually the number 1 ability last league. Seismic Trap was still played by a lot of people. I think a lot of people still caught on that Seismic Trap was not going to be nerfed enough. And it turns out that they were probably right because Seismic Trap still absolutely deleted bosses because of its multiple ways of scaling. Now, the most popular by a mile was still Explosive Arrow Ballista Totem. Now, Explosive Arrow won out as the number one meta league starter as everyone thought it would. Probably not by the margin that most people thought. I think a lot of people predicted around 25%. It is important to note that we're only on day two of the league and people might reroll off of certain builds. But 85% was Elementalist purely because Tuna and Palsteron, the softcore people, pretty heavily promoted. Even though Ziz came out with a video about Hierophant and Champion, his video was second and later on. And I think by now most people know that most of Ziz's builds are more catered towards a hardcore or SSF hardcore audience. And that is pretty good because I do believe that Elementalist is the superior ascendancy in a soft core and it does allow for a lot more damage playstyle. And it's also nice noting that Diadian Dawn is actually the most popular unique by a mile. And when I mean the most popular unique, I mean it is crazy to me that the Adian Dawn, if you look at here, is at 15% play rate or whatever. But I don't know if it's loading, but we can see here the Adian Dawn, 15%, Death Rush, 12%, and Dead Reckoning, 12%. So you might be wondering why is Death Rush on here? Well, Death Rush is actually used also by Explosive Arrow Ballista Totems, and it is used for them to get Onslaught. Now, Summon Skeleton Necromancer is second place at 11%. Dead Reckoning is also pretty much the second most popular unique at 12%. And that is pretty much because you cannot play Summon Skeletons without the Dead Reckoning Jewel. And it's very interesting to see how much these uniques are influenced by what the top starter builds are. So here you can see Diadian Dawn, Death Rush, Dead Reckoning, Tabula Rasa, which is pretty common item for almost everyone, Reign of Splinters. Alberon's Warpath is another item for Summon Skeletons. Aziri's Step is for pretty much every Spectral Helix build trying to get easy suppression. Flesh Crafter, another Summon Skeleton chest. Cold Iron Point uh, Seismic Trap item. So you can see every single item definitely influenced by the top meta builds. Now, Poisonous Concoction did come in third place, and Poisonous Concoction was pretty much tied with some of the skeletons. They were both at, I think, 11%. Now, there is some discrepancy. Oh, I did type 86% Pathfinder, but you can see here it's actually 84%. Most people thought that Pathfinder was the dominant ascendancy. I do know some people thought that Occultist could perhaps clear maps better, but Pathfinder pretty much just wins out because it has higher single target, and single target is pretty much Poisonous Concoction's number one weakness. And Snakebite and Witchfire Brew were actually the most popular 
unique items for this build. As you can see here, we go to Poisonous Concoction, and Poisonous Concoction has Snake Bite. And people use Snake Bite purely because you get more damage over Multiplier, which is how you scale your damage. Which Fire Brew for the level 21 Despair Curse Aura when you don't have a Despair Curse on Hit Ring. And Rumi's Concoction, I'm not really sure why everyone uses Rumi's Concoction. I'm assuming some popular build guide probably had Rumi's Concoction as one of their main flasks. And Cherubim's Maleficence, and this is the chest I use in the event. A lot of these items are purely because they were Pathfinder items. If you were an occultist, you would see that you had to use Carcass Jack to get the AoE requirement to get maximum overlap. So pretty interesting to always see the number one uniques that are being used. And next up, we have Spectral Helix Deadeye. Seems like people actually do hate poison builds as Deadeye wins out at 62%. And this isn't a pretty big win overall because Jung Rowan actually released the Assassin, Dead, Assassin Spectral Helix video first. And I think that Assassin Spectral Helix video was the most popular League Start build video in the whole league leading up to the launch. So very surprising. Most people are pretty much known about the Poison playstyle. They don't like the delayed damage. And that is why Deadeye won out because everyone likes Trinity builds a lot, lot more. So if you can see here, let's see what Spectral Helix is like. Are there any Berserkers? There are a few people leveling up the Berserker. I didn't get to release a guide for the Berserker Trinity Helix, but I did release a last minute video outlining my plans to play Spectral Helix on a Berserker. But I did make a guide for the Deadeye, and so did Jung Rowan. And you can see here that the Deadeye just won out completely. And... Assassin completely got left in the dust. Now it's kind of interesting to see day one. Day one, you see there's a little bit more assassins, a little, and then some more berserkers, but all these berserkers probably swapped into lightning strike. But I bet you a lot of people playing the assassin stopped playing the build because they were annoyed with the poison playstyle. But basically, Deadeye wins out on the Spectral Helix, and I wonder what most of these dead eyes are actually going to swap into because. Number one complaint you will hear about Spectral Helix is that its map clear is really, really annoying. Then next up, we have the Fish Trapper. Fish Trapper was not actually really nerfed. A lot of people, as soon as the league launched, tested out the character as standard, and they realized they're killing Maven and all the bosses just as fast, if not faster. So it's able to take down all of the endgame effortlessly. I just think a lot of the number one boss kills were actually done by Fish Trapper. So 86% Cold Iron Point, 81% Deer Stalkers. This is another interesting thing where the top meta uniques and builds are heavily correlated. So Saboteur, everyone is using Cold Iron Point and Deer Stalker. It's kind of interesting noting that all of these builds have like some core uniques that you build around that gives the build a lot of power, whether it be Snake Bite or it be a Ziri Step or something else. And next up, we will see my pick for the top five. And I'm actually pretty proud of this. Pretty happy about this. And knowing that I actually make a difference in the world instead of just languishing around and sitting here. But my words actually get to you. So I actually make a difference as the Berserker gains on the radar while the Poison variant languishes behind. I think some people pushed for a Poison Lightning Strike variant. But I immediately like didn't really think much of it. Don't really care for it. Purely because of the fact that you need the pneumatic dagger to play. And also because of the fact that it would be a late swap. You can see here last time it was more uh, assassins. And then they were able to finally swap over. But it is nice to see that Berserker is getting more and more people and more recognition in this play. Because last league, if you remember, I think Berserker was probably nowhere to be found in the Lightning Strike range. And Gale Sight and Crystallized Omniscience was actually the most common item. Now, this is kind of surprising to me because you can see here, Crystallized Omniscience, which is a completely new item, is the number one item used for Lightning Strike right now. And before I used it, this item was literally vendor trash. It was like 30 chaos, 40 chaos. No one was using it. Gale Sight is another very interesting item that is so expensive that I actually could not believe it. I thought that Gale's Sight would probably be around like 20 Chaos, 15 Chaos by the second day. But I think at points yesterday, it was 2 to 3 Exalts or something like that. Actually crazy how much of an impact just suggesting an item is really good actually has if you have people watching your videos or streams. And 
nice part is is finally some innovation, right? This is probably the one skill out of all of the top ones that you see some new items that were being used. So if we go back to Scourge League and look at Lightning Strike and see what it looked like back on day two, and I do think that Raider dominated. Oh my goodness. Look, Berserker is like the, the person that's creeping up on the Raider, right? One day we'll be ahead if Lightning Strike is not gutted. But you can see here, even the damage for all these builds is so much better in the second day now compared to the, the second day of Arch Nemesis League compared to second day of Scourge League. And it shows you that perfecting a build really does take time. But look at this. Dark Ray Vectors is the number one item. Like, come on. Rot Gut, Aziri's Promise. Oscar, man, we were in some dark times back then until some innovation took over. And now we have a new amulet, Crystallized Omniscience, and we're also using Gale Sight. So let's go see how much Gale Sight actually is. So Gale Sight, as an item in Arch Nemesis League, 125 Chaos, right? Pretty crazy. Never really got that much cheaper. If you look at Scourge League, Gale Sight, how much do you think it was on the second day? Second day, it was around 25 Chaos. So pretty big difference. So if you're playing the build, it's going to cost a lot. And yeah. So what's the conclusion we have? Number one conclusion I have is poison variants of all the popular skills were not that popular. I think people do not like the delayed damage. Compared to last league, no one played Toxic Rain. This is actually the graph of last league's skills. So you can see here, Toxic Rain was pretty much number one along with Seismic Trap. And then everything else was Summon Skeletons, Vault Summon Skeletons, Lightning Strike. So you can say this league was kind of a success in build diversity. And part of the reason was Poison's Concoction, Ex Explosive Arrow were the newcomers. Explosive Arrow was kind of a new build that was kind of subpar or not really thought about as much. It was still very strong, but no one really played it, mainly because of the totem play style or the delayed damage. But then once stuff, ge stuff keeps getting nerfed, the bottom skills start going up more, and that's how it showed. And it also got a huge buff around like 40%. So definitely a better build diversity than last league. No more just Seismic Trap and Toxic Rain. And probably one of the few leagues where Toxic Rain is actually barely played. And it also shows you that content creators really do shape the meta in a large way. When I looked at all of the League Star videos, I don't think I saw even one content creator go about Toxic Rain or recommend it. Everyone knew that the skill was dead on arrival with a 30% damage loss at a high level Toxic Rain gem. And it is nice seeing different uniques being used and people finding old uniques that have been around for so long and finding a use case or application for it and same thing goes for Diadian Dawn for Explosive Arrow same thing for what's it called Gale Sight for Lightning Strike and that's what's fun about the game right you can always find something slightly different even if GGG doesn't really change that much in terms of adding new skills or changing up the passive tree but human innovation will take hold will take hold and help us people playing Path of Exile Find true enlightenment in finding the best build in the game. And it will be interesting to see what will happen to this meta, right? Because no one really knows what will happen on day three. So let's go look at the first day of Arch Nemesis. Did anything change? Poisonous Concoction number one because it was probably the more popular leveling skill. Lightning Strike way down below, right? So a lot more people swapping into Lightning Strike. Who knows? Maybe Lightning Strike will be number one soon, right? But it will also be interesting to see what all these people with Explosive Arrow and Poisonous Concoction will swap into. As I don't really think, I mean, both builds are fine, right? But it is interesting to see which one will rise to the top or fall off. But I hope you find more Mirrors, Exalts, and Mage Plus than me. I'm almost done farming my head on her. And when I do, I'll give a pretty detailed guide about what I did and help everyone else try to get one. And also sell your maps, right? But thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you find more Mirrors, Exalts, and Mage Plus than me. And see you next time. Bye!